You're taken into a dark cave. Your mission is to escape without getting caught. Four different colored doors appear in front of you. A red one leads to an outer galaxy without a trace of oxygen. A yellow door leads you to a great white shark-infested water tank. A blue one leads to 66 million years ago, the time when a massive asteroid hit the Earth and made dinosaurs go extinct. And a purple door leads to a beautiful island filled with beaches and delicious food. On the wall, there's only one clue. It reads, pick the door that's not a primary color. You've got 10 seconds to open the right door. It's the purple door. Red, yellow, and blue are all primary colors, while purple is secondary. Plus, don't forget there's beaches and delicious food. You've managed to escape, and now you're transported to the beautiful island. You find a citizen in need. He tells you his brother had been taken by an evil mathematician, and the only way to escape is to solve his riddle. You rush to the scene and arrive at precisely 3 p.m. There, the mathematician greets you with an angry look and a tricky riddle. If you calculate the height of my tower, you and my prisoner are free to go. If you fail, you'll stay here forever. I offer you three calculation methods to choose from. Multiple long sticks, your shadow, or the long rope hanging from the tower. I give you nine seconds. Without even knowing the measurements of the sticks or the length of the rope, even if they're the same height as the tower, you'd still not know the actual size of the building. The best option is your shadow. Knowing your height, you can compare how many times your shadow fits into the tower's shadow. Add them together, and you've just found the right answer. Now that you're safe and sound, you go to your hotel to get some rest. That's when the restaurant manager calls you for help. He left the dinner service, and his staff member said everything was quiet, so they closed up early. Before shutting down the restaurant, the manager asked them to send him a photo of the deserted restaurant. Uh, this is the photo I received. Everything seems empty, and it appears my staff members are truthful. But something seems off. Can you help me figure it out? You've got 8 seconds. It appears the image was photoshopped. The employees removed the people from the picture, but they forgot to erase someone's hand from the table. Right before walking upstairs to your room, the HR manager calls you into her office. She needs help with the job application she received for the receptionist position. She's looking for someone who is multilingual and narrowed it down to three applicants. But only one person is telling the truth. Sarah is from Belgium, and she speaks Dutch. Louise is from Switzerland, and she speaks Swedish. Marie is from Monte Carlo and speaks Italian. You've got 7 seconds to figure out who is truthful. It's Sarah. In Belgium, they do speak Dutch, French, and German. In Switzerland, they mainly speak German. And in Monte Carlo, French. Time to go to your room and get some rest. But uh-oh, the elevator you entered is a trap. It takes you to the hotel's basement, where three doors appear in front of you. The first door takes you to the Amazon rainforest, with green anacondas, electric eels, and poison dart frogs. The second takes you to the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, the largest and most potent current globally. The third takes you to the top of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. It's the tallest mountain and largest volcano in the world that goes below sea level. Only one of them takes you to a safe place. Which one? You've got six seconds.
pick the third door. Mauna Kea is a dormant volcano, and it stopped erupting hundreds of thousands of years ago. So you're safe. You've made it out of the shady cave and you need to go to your room. As soon as you enter, the lights go off, and you hear bars lowering to the floor and huge chains shaking. You use your arms to navigate around and come across dots on the wooden floor. You run your fingers through them. It's Braille, and it reads, One of the three magic mushrooms on this table will help you leave this place. Pick wisely. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in this dark room forever. The mushrooms on the left will make you super strong and provides healing powers. The one in the middle will bring the electricity back, and you'll be able to see. The one on the right will make you small and invisible. You've got 5 seconds to pick the right mushroom. Turning the lights on won't free you. And becoming invisible doesn't mean you won't bump into walls. The best option is the strength and healing mushroom. You can bang on the walls and bars until you break them. The next day rolls around. You head into the parking lot to pick up your car. But the car seems to be locked. There's a three-digit pin code lock on the passenger side door. On the side of the device, you read a clue. ABC equals 123. On the ground, there's a piece of paper that reads BAD. Use the clue to find pin code numbers. Here are your four seconds. The code is 214. B is the second letter, A is the first, and D is the fourth. Now that you've got your car, time to do some shopping at the mall. You visit a jewelry shop. You discover it has a mysterious extension leading to a room filled with gold coins, diamonds, and other expensive metals. As soon as the owner spots you, he traps you in the room and locks the door. Nice shop. He tells you there's only one way to survive in that dark chamber. You must eat one muffin. If you eat the wrong one, you won't make it. But if you pick the right one, you'll be free to go. The first muffin turns you into moss. The second one turns you into a badger. The third muffin will turn you into a snake. Three seconds. Moss can't survive without the sun for long, and snakes need the sun to regulate their body's temperature. The correct answer is the muffin that turns you into a badger. These creatures spend long periods in the dark. The mayor of the town calls you into his office. He politely ignores the fact that you are now a badger. He says that something mysterious is going on inside one of the town's restaurants. Everyone has turned into a zombie. Only one human is left in the bar, and you must save them. But first, you have to identify them. You're shown a photo with three people. Only one of them is human. You've got three seconds. It's the lady on the right. It looks like the red spot on her shirt came from her hot dog. The lady on the left is missing part of her ear. Mr. Robinson is a successful businessman. One morning, he had an insight. Later that day, he invited two of his best managers to his office to discuss this breakthrough. Which of these men is Mr. Robinson? It's the man on the right. His suit jacket is on the boss's chair. It's an animal. Take away its last letter, and you'll get a water body where this creature usually catches fish. What is it? It's a seal, which transforms into the sea. Tilda's mother has seven daughters. The names of her six daughters are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Can you guess the seventh daughter's name? That's right, it's Tilda. 
It begins and ends with E, but only has one letter. What is it? The right answer is an envelope. Mrs. Sally baked her favorite chocolate cookies for a charity fair. She left them on the kitchen table and went to the garden. When she came back, all the cookies had been eaten. Oh, Mrs. No. Sally got very angry and questioned her three children. Her eldest son, David, said he hadn't eaten the cookies because he had spent all day in the garden. Her middle daughter, Shelly, wiped some crumbs off her face and said she'd just eaten a sandwich. The youngest daughter, Sarah, said she didn't eat sweets because she was on a diet. Mrs. Sally knew exactly who was lying. Have you figured it out too? It was David. Mrs. Sally was in the garden when someone ate the cookies. If she had seen David there, he wouldn't be among the suspects. Look at the picture. Can you find the odd star? The star that's different is in the left corner. The middle of this star is smaller than that of the rest. Delivery guy Robert entered a jewelry store to pick up an expensive diamond necklace for his boss. Saleswoman Daphne took the necklace out of the safe and was about to pack it in a box. But suddenly, the lights went off in the entire store. When the lights turned on a couple of seconds later, the necklace was gone. The alarm went off and the store door slammed shut. But only Robert, Daphne, and one other customer called Vicky remained inside. The police came over and interrogated all of them. Robert said he hadn't seen anything. Daphne said she had felt someone push her in the dark. They must have taken the box. And Vicky claimed she had been choosing rings for her upcoming wedding in the opposite corner of the store. The detectives immediately understood who the robber was. What about you? Vicky stole the necklace. She's already wearing a wedding ring on her finger. Kitty was walking in the woods and got lost. At one point, she met a magic fox. The fox said, If you can solve my riddle, I'll help you find your way home. But if you don't, you'll turn into a fox and stay here with me. Uh oh. When you have it, you want to share it. But if you share it, you don't have it. What is it? Kitty returned home that night. What did she say to the fox? It's a secret. If you share a secret, you can't keep it anymore. Look at the picture. How many squares do you see? A, 10, B, 5, C, 3, D, 6. You're right, there are 10 squares. You're supposed to count all the colors. Stephen had a dream of becoming a successful geologist and traveling the world. That's why he took a very difficult test and answered all the questions correctly. Professor Smith said he had one final question for Stephen. If the guy answered it correctly, he'd go on an exciting mountain expedition the following week. Mount Everest was discovered in 1852, but what was the highest mountain in the world before that? The next week, Stephen was proudly walking in the mountains with his colleagues. What did he say to the professor? Stephen said it was Mount Everest. It was still the highest mountain in the world, even though it hadn't been discovered yet. Now, it was the snowiest winter in the last 30 years. One morning, local police officer Chris was patrolling the area. Suddenly, he noticed a suspicious young lady. She was walking towards the road and carrying two heavy bags. Chris asked her what was in the bags. The lady said she had broken up with her boyfriend and packed his stuff to get rid of it. But Chris knew for sure that she was a burglar. How? How? 
she got out of the house through the window. People don't do that when leaving their own homes. Noah was an alien on a mission to investigate human behavior on vacation. He landed near a popular sand beach in Malibu. Noah put on a special human-like costume and hid in the crowd. Special Agent Sam was sent to the beach to deal with his issue. Sam arrived and questioned people at the seaside. He warned them that aliens might look like humans, but no one seems to have noticed anything suspicious. Take a look at these vacationers. Which one of them is the alien? That's right, the guy on the left has four arms. Yeah, that's a clue. Agent Sam caught the alien, but Noah changed his appearance and managed to escape. Sam noticed a weird figure jumping inside a train. The man decided to stop the train to check all the passengers. Look at the picture attentively and help Sam find the alien. The old man in the right corner is the alien. He's holding a book upside down. Vicky was working on her laptop in a coffee shop. At one point, Vicky needed to go to the bathroom. She decided it'd be safe enough to leave her stuff unattended and headed to the bathroom. But when the girl returned, she found out that her backpack and her laptop were missing. Oh, no. Vicky ran outside and saw three elderly ladies with picnic baskets sitting in the park. The girl asked them if they had seen the thief, but all three of them assured her they hadn't noticed anyone. Ms. Green said she had just joined her friends. Ms. Smith was eating her sandwich and reading a newspaper, and Ms. Jackson was taking pictures of birds. Vicky called the police because she knew for sure who the thief was. How did she figure it out? Ms. Green stole Vicky's things. The red backpack strap is hanging out of her picnic basket. Paul stayed late at the library. When he finished studying, he headed home. As he was walking down the dark hallway, he heard a voice coming from the men's locker room. Paul noticed that someone had locked the door from the outside. Paul opened it and saw Tom. The guy had no idea who had locked him in. He went to the swimming pool, but it was closed that day, so he decided to go home. Suddenly, someone turned off the lights and locked him in. Paul promised to find the culprit. The next morning, he questioned his classmates. Courtney said she had been working on her project in the classroom. Josh said, I swam in the pool for a while and then went to play basketball. Bob was with Courtney, but he left earlier to celebrate his granny's birthday with his family. Paul understood who was lying right away. What about you? It was Josh. The day before, the swimming pool was closed. Andrew is a photographer. He was walking alone in the wilderness and met a puma. The guy was very lucky and managed to escape. But he found out that his filter water bottle opened when he was running away from the animal. Now he didn't have any water left. Some time passed and Andrew got very thirsty. He had three options. The first one was to drink from a salty lake. The second, to drink cactus juice. And the third option was to get water from a muddy stream. Help Andrew make the right choice. The third option is the least dangerous. You can't drink water from a salt lake, it won't quench your thirst. If Andrew drank cactus juice, he would get poisoned. But his filter bottle can easily clean muddy water. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.